Hey everybody, I'm going to talk to you today about how to operate a, a typical small format mixing board like this one we see here. This is an Allen & Heath Mix Wizard board from the mid 2000s. Um, what I've got going on here is I've got a classroom and up on the stage in the front we've got all these different sound sources. We've got some uh, vocal mics, uh, three of them across the front. We've got the keyboard, we've got some guitar amps with a microphone in front of it, the drum kit, uh, bass amp. That uh, bass amp has a uh, line out in the back that we're feeding into a big old snake. Um, so all those sound sources are being plugged in here to the side of this big spool uh, that's got this giant fat wire that goes on the floor all the way up, comes up through our table and splits into the individual wires again to be plugged into the board itself. So everything on stage uh, generates sound at a different volume. Um, so yeah, we might have the guitar amps turned really low so they, uh, they, they would go into the microphone actually pretty quiet. The singer might be blowing his guts out up there so he might uh, actually be generating quite a lot of volume. And who knows how much the sound of the electronics of the drum kit or the, the keyboard are gonna generate. So when we plug into the board, everything is plugged in individually and every instrument has its own exact identical set of controls to control that sound as the thing next to it. So each little vertical slice here is going to be the exact same controls but for a different sound source from the stage. Um, on the first couple channels here I've got my microphones left, center, and right. That's for, from my perspective the microphone left, center, and right here. Um, and the very first thing that we have here at the top is our preamp. This is not really uh, to control how loud the thing is. This is just to make sure that everything from the stage ends up coming down the rest of the electronics at an optimal volume. So uh, here I've got these uh, three microphones turned up to about the same. Uh, and, and if I happen to get a singer that is really, really loud, I might actually uh, back the preamp off so he's not distorting through as he comes through the rest of the electronics here. But, um, this is just to just to make sure that everything comes into the board at the same volume so that we can control it Next thing that you've got as you as you uh, as the sound flows down the power strip here is you got your equalizer This is your basic high mid low or, or treble mid bass kind of a thing Everybody knows about music how you boost the bass what that does to it Well on this one you can boost the bass on just the singer's microphone or, or, or something um, we actually have two separate bands of mid-range, so this, this is a mid-range that's tuned closer to bass, and this is a mid-range that's tuned closer to treble, um, but you actually can fine-tune that even more. I can, I can tune this knob so that it is really and truly treble, or I can tune it so that it's lower in the frequency spectrum all the way down to uh, 500 hertz is, is pushing really close to the bass range there. So. I can uh, I can change what frequency this affects and uh, and kind of get a little more surgical with how exactly I'm shaping the the tone of whatever audio is in that path and then of course you come down I'm gonna come back to these in a second you have your master volume all this really does is control how much of whatever instrument or, or microphone is on this channel ends up going to our main outputs here so as you can see um, every different instrument um, is, has been set to a different volume. Um, this guitar amp must not have been used, so it's been pulled all the way down to nothing. Um, bass is about that loud, drums are about that loud. That's probably because even though we want a nice balance here, the bass amplifier, as you can see in the, in the middle of the stage there, it's a pretty big amplifier, but the drums are electronic drums. And so even though he's got that speaker piped, uh, pointed right at him, this is, this is the speaker for the drummer, um, he's got plenty of that, but we're not hearing that much of it out here. So, uh, but we are probably hearing lots of that bass amp. It's pointed right at us at the mix position. So we're probably pushing the, uh, the bass not as loud because we're, we're, some of it's gonna be coming from the, the main speakers, which is, is the volume we're sending to it from here. And the drums, um, we're gonna put a lot of that into the main speakers because we are not hearing the drummer uh, from, from his amp over here. So anyway, you can balance stuff that way. Um, we have some, some left and right controls. And um, honestly, I, I usually leave these all up at the center uh, when I'm doing live sound so that somebody who's standing in front of this speaker 
doesn't miss whatever I'm putting all the way over in this speaker. Um, in this situation though, this is a more controlled scenario and uh, somebody's been in here panning these back and forth to try and make it sound good like a good record mix. I skipped over the aux channels a minute ago. Um, all of these are basically the exact same thing as your main faders down here. They're, uh, they're different volumes. So the, um, the main faders here are controlling how much of each channel, how much volume from that channel is being sent to these faders, which I have plugged in to uh, the big main speakers up here. On aux one, I have it labeled here on the side, this is the left monitor. So all the way across here, the top gray knob is however much we're sending of that channel's volume to the monitor speaker that you can see on the floor, it's behind that chair. This monitor speaker, that's monitor one, and this is monitor two over here. So um, if somebody's standing on the stage over here, I can send them, like for example, here's, here's my drum channel. I can send just drums to, uh, to that guy's monitor and he'll, it'll turn up the drums, but only in that speaker because the guy standing over here is like, I can't hear the drums. So uh, now he'll be able to hear that better because uh, I had turned that up. Um, likewise, I can put more or less of that sound into uh, the other, uh, into the right monitor or on this uh, channel number three here the top blue knob I can send that I've got that plugged into the uh, the drummers speaker over here which his drums are also plugged into that so he can uh, he can on top of his amplifier there he can control not only his own volume but the volume of what I'm sending to him from the board um, the yellow knobs are pretty much the same as as the the blue and gray knobs here but instead of sending volume from these things to a particular speaker, we're sending them to our built-in effects unit up here. This little section uh, generates a reverb or an echo kind of a sound. Um, it's got a couple of different settings that you can set up in there. So, um, so right now, I've got this turned up a little bit. So uh, left microphone is actually going over here to our reverb unit. So you get a little of that... Uh, reverb sound on that and we can we can have more or less of that now these knobs act a little bit differently um, on this one we want the the singer up on stage to be able to hear himself through the monitor no matter what I do with how much volume I'm putting uh, into the main speakers of him I don't want his volume that he hears of himself to be going up and down as I as I change his volume for us to hear so these are what are called pre-fader sends. Um, it sends the, the audio to that speaker before it takes into account how loud this is. In the reverb, those are post-fader sends, um, and you can see post right here and uh, pre up here, so it's, it's got those labeled. When I turn the volume down of this singer in the house, we don't want to still hear just a ton of reverb from his voice. We want the reverb to go away when I make his voice go away. So that's why we're using a post fader uh, send to control how much of that goes to the reverb. Um, the blue knobs here, I actually have a switch. We can, we can make them pre or post fader sends. I've got them all set up as pre fader sends since I'm using them again as, uh, as more monitors. But this board gives us some flexibility as to whether we want to use these to send to effects like these ones or whether we want to use them for monitors uh, like those. That is pretty much the whole board. Um, the one other thing that uh, people are going to want to know about is um, some, some tricky spots over here. We have the master volume for how much is, is going to each different place. So for example, right now I'm, we're hearing some music. I've got music in these um, uh, last two channels coming from my computer over there, up the aux cable plugged in up there. So when I push these up, we can hear the main speakers come up. So this, the audio from here is ending up going to these faders, which are already up. You can hear that little bit of sound of the song playing back there. And the song is done now. Um, so when uh, the sound is coming through here, 
you can hear that sort of more muffled version and I can control the master volume of how much is going through that speaker here. So that's the monitor being louder. And here's the, uh, here's the mains being louder. You can hear a difference in the clarity right now because the, when I push the mains up, it's actually the speakers that are facing us that are getting louder. Whereas when I turn up the, uh, the aux's uh, main volume, then it's actually the monitors on the floor that are getting louder uh, for, for whichever monitor I'm actually controlling here through this. Um, the other thing is uh, you've got your, your mute buttons here. So when I mute these channels, all the music goes away. It stops going to the auxes. It stops going to the mains. It just kills all the audio in there. So uh, good to know about. If you can't get sound through your board, do check to see if the mutes are pushed. Um, over here we've got our main fader. Right now we have no sound going to the mains. Um, if I push this up, yeah, we're coming down too quiet here. Um, we'll end up seeing some sound come up here, especially for piping loud music through this. Um, if I press this button, the pre-fader level, you can see just how quiet that is. Instead of showing us how much volume is coming through the main speakers here, because I've pushed this button and, the, and you can see now the PFL pre-fader level light has come on, this is showing us how loud the sound is on this channel. When I deactivate that button, light turns off, now it's showing us the mains. So if I wanna see how loud channel 16 is, I press that button, and that's how loud it is coming down the strip right now because the volume's super turned low for my computer. Um, so yeah, I can check how loud anything is all the way down. How loud is the vocalist on channel one? And uh, it's showing us that at the moment. Um, I think that's all the main stuff you're gonna need to know about to be able to run this board. Uh, everything else we'll figure out later. Lots of stuff I didn't talk about, like the pads, the roll off, the phantom power. Um, there's more to unpack here, but that's a, a pretty decent uh, first look at what you need to know about to be able to make some music happen through this thing. So enjoy and ask questions if you have questions.